The absolute most asked question on this channel is, are iOS developers in demand? And I understand why people ask that question because if you're coming to this channel, chances are you wanna be an iOS developer. Sure, I do some things that have to do with web development and other types of software development and computer science areas, but this is mainly an iOS development channel. So let me say, if that interests you at all, be sure to subscribe because, well, I like to have so are iOS developers in demand? In short, yes. I mean, just take a look at the App Store. You see millions of applications on the App Store. Many more are uploaded every single day. And sure, most of them aren't successful, but it's not necessarily being successful on the App Store to be a good iOS developer because all of these applications, successful and non-successful ones, need to be developed by somebody. Also, things you may not know is that a lot of companies use mobile applications for themselves. They don't care to have it on the App Store. They care to have it on their own enterprise devices. So something like a Fortune 500 company may not have an iOS application deployed, but they may have an iOS application on each of their devices in order to communicate within the team. If you ever heard of Slack.com, which I'm actually making a clone of that on my web dev series, that actually started off as an in-house project for their development teams to communicate. That needed to be developed by somebody. I'm sure it was developed by their team actually, but if it was in a mobile application, an iOS developer needed to create that, whether it was freelance or whether it was in-house. So really I'm just trying to point out to you that everything you see on the App Store isn't exactly how iOS developers make money. Sure, you can develop iOS applications for yourself, but you can also develop iOS applications for others and get paid immediately and not have to worry about the actual success of the application. Another is you could be hired as an iOS developer, iOS engineer for another company that just you do whatever they need you to do when it comes to iOS development. And they may even ask you to kind of venture into Android development or full stack web development. And guess what? you are getting paid to learn new skills within the software development industry. Not all jobs do that, but some may. So just keep your mind open when it comes to that. And to bring the analogy full circle within that company, you could be making applications that deploy onto the App Store. You could be making applications for clients for that company, or you could be making applications in-house for that company, maybe in order to communicate better with team members, like the whole Slack.com thing. So yes, in order to have iOS applications developed, you need an iOS developer. Now let's bring in a real world experience. If you ever heard of SoundCloud, they're essentially the audio and song version of YouTube, where you know musical artists go to post their songs, just like film creators post their videos on YouTube. So SoundCloud is a big company, and recently, uh, maybe last year, I don't know if it was this past summer or summer of 2016, but SoundCloud had to lay off, I don't know, maybe like 100 to 200 employees. And some of those, you guessed it, are iOS developers. Well, they called them iOS engineers, tomato, tomato, really. And one of them actually wrote a Medium post. I'll link that down in the description below in case you want to read it, called My Week at SoundCloud. And in the very first or second paragraph, he mentions how he just gets hired and within that week or two of him starting, he gets the notice that in two or three months, he's going to be laid off. So not very good news, right? However, they had a list of all of the developers or I guess any of the employees, whether it was HR, whether it was a software developer, on this spreadsheet, it was a Google Doc, and it was shared all over the internet for many different companies to see. To make a long story short, this particular iOS engineer who just got their job at SoundCloud got 60 plus emails from potential employers because they were in need of a good iOS engineer. I believe this wasn't based in the United States. This was based somewhere over in Europe. I could be mistaken, but you can read the uh, article if you want to learn more about it. But he got 60 plus emails regarding a new job offer. So that's not necessarily a job offer. Let me, let me take a step back there. It's a potential employer so what they would do is they would contact you you would go in maybe a phone interview a real interview and then they would see if you're a good fit for their company but just imagine that imagine you applying to 60 different places you're not even going to hear back from all of them this guy was on this google spreadsheet that went viral and got 60 plus emails and he essentially had his choosing for who he wanted to call back narrow it down to the companies that he actually wanted to work at maybe there was five after the 60 that he would actually want to work at in the proper location and then he was able to narrow it down from there if he was able to get a job which he actually spoiler alert was able to get a job and don't get me wrong i understand the concerns of its ios development and demand because 
iOS development is a small niche within the software development industry because you have full stack developers, you have Android developers, you have iOS developers, and that's what a lot of people think of because that's a lot of the consumer and software. But there is Java, C++, Python, all of these other languages that you've heard of. Those are, those are for real jobs and that actually builds up the majority of jobs. If you're going to look into government contracting, you're probably looking at C++ or Java or both. You may need to know a little bit of each, but if you know one, you essentially know the other. And I say that because if you know Java, which is actually used for Android development, but it's used in a lot of other software as well, you can essentially learn C++. You can learn Swift. You can especially learn Python because what I've heard from Python, which I'm going to be familiar with it here in the next year or so, it's, it's a lot easier and you can do a lot more with a lot less. All right, so I'm getting a little bit sidetracked, but what I'm really just trying to send home is that iOS applications are a real thing and they need to be developed by somebody. That somebody is you, that somebody is me. So we need to make sure that we're the ones getting the jobs to create these iOS applications because someone needs to do it. You don't want someone trying to hire a Java developer in order to develop an iOS application. You want someone to, to, to uh, sign a iOS developer in order to create an iOS application. It only makes sense. However, keep in mind that there may be somebody who can do iOS uh, development as well as Java development or full stack development. You know, they're well versed in, in more than just iOS development. And those people may be well versed in those things and outscore you if you're applying to the same position that they're applying to. So keep that in mind. Don't restrict yourself to just one language, Swift, or just one platform, iOS, you want to be able to expand. Like right now I'm doing a, a full stack web development. I've also dabbled, well, I'm very good with Java and I've also dabbled with Android development because that's what they use is Java. So just make sure you're always open to new things. You're open to learning full stack or you're open to learning Android because that's something that you want to keep in mind for the future. And I know a lot of people are going to talk about PhoneCap or uh, Xamarin or just Cordova altogether, or even React Native. And what that does is you're able to create, let's say a website with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And what that does is create a native mobile application for iOS and Android. Let me tell you right now, it's not exactly native. I plan to, well, I, I'm thinking about creating the website I'm making in Web Dev Journey uh, compatible with React Native so I can turn that into an Android and an iOS application, you know, native application. And I want to create an identical iOS application and test the speeds one next to the other. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make that website React Native, but if I see enough interest in it for you guys, because I'm sure that you'd like to see the statistics just as much as I would like to see the statistics of which one is faster and by how much, just let me know and I'll uh, be sure to do that. Also, if you have any other questions regarding iOS development or anything that you think I would have the answer to, be sure to leave that in the comment section below as well, because I love your guys' questions. I love answering them. If you want me to make a video on that particular question, and I think it's a video worthy question, then just type that in the uh, comment section as well. Just you know, ask your question to say, would you mind making a video about this? Because some people ask me questions, I don't know if they want me to make a whole video or if they just want me to send them like a paragraph response. I could do both, just just let me know because uh, if, I, if I can make a video for you guys, then I'd really like to. I'm, I'm, I'm here to make videos for y'all and for myself because as the more I learn, the more you learn, it's a win-win situation really. So that is it for me today. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. And until next time, have a good one. Thank you.